Uh, next up, pitfalls of differentiation. Uh, so it takes time and responsibility uh, on behalf of the teacher, right? And uh, not all students will be happy with every differentiation method, right? So look, it takes time to differentiate, right? And it's a lot harder to just you know, do something that's not just a lecture or give them a worksheet every single day. Um, you know, to do projects and make ones that they're actually like and enjoy and they want to engage with and, and they're going to create tangible products for and there's real world applicability um, and, and they can communicate these results to, that's going to be difficult to construct these things and there's going to take time on behalf of the teacher, right? Because there's 180 days in a class, right? And maybe you're teaching more than one class, which you oftentimes will be teaching more than one class, right? So that's a lot of, uh, you know, lessons to come up with, right, that are interesting and engaging and to teach the concept too. So it can't just be interesting and engaging, it also has to teach the concept Concept, right? So, God, it's extremely complex. And so time and responsibility on behalf of the teacher. You got to use your time effectively when you're a teacher, right? You can't just be messing around and expecting the best results to come uh, to fruition. Uh, you really got to be, um, God, you really got to be on your game, right? So uh, differentiation. Uh, not all students will be happy with every differentiation method, right? Uh, look, you're going to have students who, they don't, they don't enjoy group work. They hate group work. Right? But um, it's a skill that you need to foster anyways. And sometimes uh, a lot of students will enjoy group work. Most students, in fact, will enjoy group work. Right? So even though you've got some students who might not enjoy it, uh, most of them might. Right? That's something to take into consideration. Or maybe there's a skill that outweighs that they need to learn. Um, so yeah, you know, not everybody's going to be happy with it. Um, and it will take a lot of time. Right? And sometimes teachers don't have time. Right? Maybe they've got one planning period. Right? How are you supposed to plan? for two or three classes when they got one planning period, right? That's 15 minutes of class. Um, so, so you got an hour planning, right? Um, you got three classes, 20 minutes of class, right? You got to go to the bathroom, there's another five minutes. You got to go to the office, another five minutes. Right now you got 50 minutes divided by three, whatever that is, I don't know, 17 and a half minutes, right? Um, look, I mean, you're not really, or 17 minutes, 16 and a half minutes, something like that. Um, you're not, you don't really got time to do everything, right? And uh, you also got to prepare for the next class, too, if there's just one after it, right? Um, or some supervisory duty. Like, it's just time is not on your side. It's not your friend as a teacher, right? And so you got to be willing to, uh, you know, go above and beyond um, sometimes to create the best lessons or uh, potentially cataloging them for years and years to come, right? So if you're a teacher for 30 years, right, maybe every single week you make sure you get one really good lesson in there. And then by the end of five years, now you got really good lessons all the time. Right? And so that's just something to think about and take into consideration.